in July, a very famous inorganic chemist, Professor Lord Jack Lewis, died. And he's actually the only chemist that I know who's become a lord. For those of you who are not in the UK, a lord is a member of the upper house of parliament and people are not elected as a lord but they're made a lord if it's felt that they can really contribute to the governing of the country. So it's a real honour. Jack Lewis was an undergraduate and a PhD student here in Nottingham. So we're very proud that he did his first chemistry here. And as you probably know, we keep record cards for all our students. So here is Jack Lewis's record card with a photo of him as he was as an undergraduate. He started here as a student in the session 1946 to 47. So that was a year before I was born. And what I think is interesting is that if you look at his marks, he did really well in organic chemistry. And even in his final year, although he became a famous inorganic chemist, his organic chemistry was better. Once he got his, do his first degree, his BSc, and it says special first class. I have no idea what that means, but I'm sure it's really good. And he got that in 1949. And then he did a doctorate, a PhD here in 1952. And we have his PhD thesis, which is the reaction of liquid dinitrogen tetroxide with metals. Dinitrogen tetroxide is an oxide of nitrogen, N2O4. And it is a really topical compound because the Rosetta spacecraft, which on August the 6th, that's today, is making its rendezvous with the um, comet in space. And it is using N2O4 as the propellant or the oxidizer in its motors for the final maneuvering. And the work that was done by Jack Lewis was looking at how metals react with N2O4. When he was working, it wasn't known that N2O4 would be a really good rocket propellant, but he was laying the basis of what later became the study of the corrosion of the pipes in rockets. And the reason why on Rosetta, when they fire the rockets, the pipes won't be blocked is because of chemistry that was started by Jack Lewis. This thesis is surprisingly fat. It's partly because it has included some of his publications. After working here, he worked to the Atomic Energy Research Establishment at Harwell, and then he became an associate lecturer in Sheffield. He moved around from several, several universities, ending up as professor in Cambridge, which is where I met him. In Cambridge, he did both distinguished chemistry and also he was the founding head, the so-called warden, of one of the latest colleges in Cambridge the Robinson's College. And really, I think he became a lord as a result of his political and administrative experience in developing the college and its role as a centre of science. But let me just tell you a little bit about the science he did in Cambridge. He was working with compounds that were compounds between metals and carbon monoxide and particularly compounds that had a lot of metal atoms in them. And he tried to get bigger and bigger clusters of metals. This was so-called cluster compounds. And I think eventually he got one that was sort of, had really quite a large number of um, atoms, looked a bit like a tetrahedron like this one. And the idea behind his research was to try and understand how these clusters of metal affected the reactivity of molecules that were bonded to the metals, perhaps as a model for working out what happens in catalysts and catalytic reactions. 
He was a very nice person and what was really good was that he was very kind to people who were greatly his junior. A few days after he died, I got an email from one of his former students, who's now working in Germany, who wrote to me, Jack Lewis is the person who has most influenced my career, but more significantly, my way of approaching a scientific problem and thinking about chemistry in general. Having been an early riser throughout my life, I used to be the only group member in the lab before 8 a.m. and would see Jack almost every day about that time when he, who came to the department even earlier, would take his first break to discuss chemistry and other matters with him. We've stayed in close contact after my PhD and wrote each other more than 100 letters, most of which I've kept since then. And I think that's a terrific tribute to somebody who's a senior professor interacting with a student. I should say that when I was a student, I had quite a large car, a so-called Wolseley 1800, and much to my embarrassment, Jack Lewis had the same car. I'm not sure that he drove himself. I think it's, it was his wife that drove. So I had to sneak into the car park and hope that nobody would notice that I, as a student, had the same car. I was embarrassed it was a little pretentious that a student should have a car like that.